The first step, be in a hurry. Be in a hurry. Well, what do you mean be in a hurry? Be in a hurry. You don't have a lot of time. This is not lollygag time. This is not time to socialize. This is not time to, to talk shop and no, that's not, this is not time for that. You're making a phone call with a purpose. So be in a hurry. The second thing, show value. And the third step, take it away. Every time you make a phone call, prospecting guys, this is your formula. Be in a hurry, show value, take it away. Be in a hurry, show value, take it away. Next time you come to training, I was gonna ask you, when you're making a phone call, what's your purpose? Be in a hurry, show value, take it away. That is the formula. Remember, there's one objective for making phone calls. That was the formula, but there's only one objective. How many people believe that the objective is to sponsor people? Raise your hands. No, wrong objective. That's why it's hard for you to pick up the phone, because you're trying to sponsor them. And those who believe it's, it's to sponsor people, I guarantee you're talking too much. And if you're talking too much, people are not coming out. When people are not coming out, you're getting frustrated. How many of you have felt like that before? You follow what I'm saying? The purpose of you making a phone call is to collect a decision. What do you mean collect a decision? I'm a decision collector. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna put that on my business card. Holton Bugs, decision collector. It's a conversation piece, first of all. But you're a decision collector. What do you mean? I just collect decisions. I get paid for decisions, yes and no. I'll show you how you get paid for people telling you no. How many of y'all love to get paid for people telling you no? Some of you say, man, I'd be platinum already if somebody, I got, I'll show you how to do that, okay? Now, this is what you do here. You're gonna, gonna be in a hurry. And I'm gonna do some role play here. And I've got my list. I've got posture because I don't need anybody. I've got 500 people on my list and I've got to get through them quickly anyway. So I don't care if Larry tells me he's not looking. I'm just looking for a decision. So I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going to start a call. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of scripts that I've used in the past. Now remember what these scripts are. Scripts are typically or really nothing more than a guideline of things that you really can stay within those lines, but more important things that you should not say. That's what a script is. But you take that script and you incorporate it with your own personality. Everybody doesn't have the same personality and things that work for me exactly the way I do them may not be the same to fit your personality. You follow what I'm saying? So now, can you use the exact script? You sure can. I didn't get this script right here that I'm gonna give you. This is what originated by me. I learned this script from somebody else in network marketing who was a multimillionaire. And I took exactly what they said and made it work for me. I pick up the phone. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call. And let's say I've got Regina at the top of my list. Regina's on my list and I'm gonna give a phone call to Regina. Remember, my, my, my purpose is to collect a decision. My formula is to be in a hurry, show value, and take it away. So, Regina picks up the phone. The phone rings, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, how you doing Regina? This is Holton, what are you up to? Doing great. Listen, Regina, I'm about to walk into a meeting don't have a lot of time, but I needed to ask you something real quick, Regina. Okay. Regina, if I found a way to make a fortune on the internet in the next six to 12 months, would you wanna know about it? Absolutely. Listen, Regina, I'm working with some people right now, extremely successful. I'm about to meet with them shortly anyway. Seven o'clock at the Hilton Southwest Hotel off of 59 in Hillcroft. I need you to be there professionally dressed. You can be there at seven o'clock, can't you? Sure I can. Great. I'll give her the directions, whatever it is. Regina, I will see you there on Thursday. Talk with you later. That's how simple of, uh, uh, an invite should be. If you're on the phone longer than 75 seconds, typically you're talking too long, really 60 seconds. 75 seconds, if you're on the phone 75 seconds or less, it's a great invite. If you're getting over 90 seconds to two minutes, they ain't coming, they ain't getting in the business. That's just what the numbers are. I was very quick, I was very purposeful. I let her know in the beginning that I didn't have a lot of time. And because she knew that in the beginning, I didn't have a lot of time, she didn't ask me a lot of questions. How many of y'all get questions all the time when you call people? It's because your posture is weak and it's because you're spending too much time getting to the message and you're doing it with a lack of confidence. Sometimes you'll get rebuttals. And I'll just show you how to overcome them real quick. You'll get some mild rebuttals and sometimes you'll get strong ones. Mile rebuttal. I'm calling, let's say Edwin's at the top of my list. 
and I'm gonna call Edwin. Phone ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Edwin, how you doing, man? It's Holton. Hey, Holton, how are you? Oh, doing great, doing great. Hey, listen, I'm about to get on a conference call real quick. I don't have a lot of time, but hey, I need to ask you something real quick. Got a quick second? Uh, just a minute, man. Listen, that's all I got anyway. Edwin, let me ask you a question. If the opportunity came up, if you didn't make about three to four thousand dollars this month, would you take an hour out of your time to evaluate something? Doing what? Listen, I can't explain it all right now. It's about making that type of income, but would you take an hour out of your time to evaluate something? Yeah, I, I can do that. You sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, listen, Ed, right now, this might not be for you. It may. I don't know. I'm working with a lot of people right now, making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. Some are making that per week. I've got an opportunity. I've got two tickets available, but I've got 10 other people that I need to call. And I thought of you first. So do you want to take that hour or do you not? Where is this? Hotel? It's going to be at the Hilton Hotel, Southwest Freeway, 59 in Hillcroft. Can you be there? Can you tell me a little bit about what it's about? Uh, I'll tell you what, Edwin, this is what we'll do here. Whenever you decide that you want to get some information, give me a call back. I've got some other people that I want to give these tickets to. I'll talk with you later. Goodbye. I've already told him I don't have a lot of time. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to chase me. I'm not about to chase him. Well, we got travel and you could save money on travel and you could, we've got this wonderful medical plan and you could save money on that. And we've got this shop, this shopping website and it's just, it's got all kind of stuff on there. And, and now you're going into a five minute dissertation where you just told him you're about to get on a conference call. He said, man, this conference call must not be important. He don't have nothing going on. He just sat here and told me everything that went on with his business. No, I don't want to come. So thanks, Ed. Yeah, uh, thanks. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to be there. Let me share something with you guys. A try, a maybe, I'll think about it. It looks like I can, I should be. Anything other than a definite yes is a polite way of telling you that they are not coming. Don't be afraid to have a person tell you no. You want no or yes. You don't want maybes. People get off the phone. Somebody tell them, I think I'll be there. And they get so excited and they come to the business briefing. You know, I got seven people who are su supposed to come. And guess what? They were supposed to come because they told you they might be able to be there. And you took that as a yes because you were afraid to stand up for your multi-million dollar business and have them make a decision for whether or not they were looking for the information that you asked them about. Get a decision right away. Get a decision. So you saw what I did is I, I was in a hurry with Regina and Ed. Listen, I don't have a lot of time. I'm about to get on a conference call. Some of you say, well, you know what? I may not going to be calling to get on the conference call and I don't want to lie to my friends. Well, as soon as you hang up, call the conference call line. <laughs> Just call it. That way you're not lying to them, right? <laughs> I'm about to walk into a meeting. Well, you know, I don't want to tell my friends I'm not walking to a meeting and, and they know I'm at home. Okay, call your wife and say, hey, we need to have a meeting real quick. <laughs> call your husband. Hey, listen, we need to have a meeting real quick. And you have a meet. Hey, this business is awesome. Meeting's over. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, what you have to do, you have to create your own realities, create your own environment for success. So the first thing, I was in a hurry. Second thing is, I show value. If I found a way to make a fortune on the internet in the next six to 12 months, would you want to know about it? I don't say, would you be interested? Would you be interested implies that they have to make a decision whether or not they're going to do it at this time. I'm not looking for a decision of whether or not they're going to do the business. I'm looking for a decision on whether or not they want to know about it. Would you want to know about it? Yes. Okay. Great. If you want to know about it, seven o'clock here, hotel. If you're doing a PBR, hey, seven o'clock, my house. Be here on time. Don't be afraid to ask people to be there on time. Some of you are afraid to tell people to be there on time because you think they may not come. You don't want them. If they don't respect your, if they don't respect you enough to be on time, you don't want them. Tell them, be on time. So I showed value. With Edwin, I had to take it away. Edwin, this may be for you. It may not be before you. So he was an example of a mild take it away. He was an example of me taking it all away. 
Because I'm not going I'm not going to get off the phone letting him think that he won. I'd rather get off the phone having my self-image built, me feeling strong and proud about my business, than letting him get off the phone thinking, yeah, he tried to call me and sucker me into a deal. And then you know what? I'm internalizing that thinking that what he's thinking about me, and that's why some of you won't make more phone calls, because you're worried about what other people think about you. Let me share something with you. Other people that you've called that turn the business down, they're not thinking anything about you. They're going on with their life. How many of you recently had somebody knock on your door to try to sell you something? Some of, some of you have. Now, did you buy it, Larry? No. no. Let me ask you a question. When you turned it down, did you go in the house and start talking about that person? And No, you just went on with your daily life. Now, what if that person thought that, man, he's he in there talk to, telling, you know, raving about me and all this stuff. And, you know, that, then that person would have a real bad day and they wouldn't be a successful person in that business. They went on about, it was next. You're collecting a decision. See, I collected a decision from Edwin. I made the decision for him. No, he's not looking. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I don't get off the phone without a decision at all. I don't get off the phone without a decision. Now, there's some other approaches. There's some what we call backdoor approaches that you can use. For people that are four checkers, let's say you're a two checker and you know it. Just, be, I mean, be honest with yourself. If you know that you're a two checker, the worst thing you can do is to not be real with yourself right now, presently. If you're a two checker, you know it, work on becoming a three checker and then a four checker. But let's say you're a two checker, you got people on your list who are four checkers and they don't respect your ability enough to uh, you know, listen to a business that you're doing. And you'll have some people like that. Those of you who have people like that, you can become more successful than the four checkers that are in here. And all you do is just use the backdoor approach. Now with the backdoor approach, the conversation or the phone call may be just a little bit longer. Just a little bit. But you're still doing the same exact thing. You get on the phone. For example, I'm calling Edwin again. Hey, uh, Edwin, how you doing? This is Holton. Now, let's just say I used to work for Ed. And Ed was this big guy, multimillionaire, and, you know, I used to work for him. So, you know, typically people who work for somebody else, that other person normally is the kind of has the authority, if you know what I mean. And people don't typically like to, owners of companies don't like to do the same business that their employees do. If you notice, they don't hang out the same places y'all hang out either. They have a different country club membership. Than, well, they have country club memberships. <laughs> First of all, okay. Now. So I want to, you know, Edwin to see the business. And so I have a lot of respect for him. And I know he has respect for me in terms of knowing that I'm an honest person, knowing that I'm kind of a, I'm a go-getter a little bit, and uh, knowing that I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm somebody who wants to achieve some things out of life. So I call Edwin up. Hey, Edwin, how you doing? This is Holton. Hey, Holton, how are you? I'm doing absolutely incredible. Edwin, listen, I don't have a lot of time, uh, but I want to know, is this a busy time for you? Do you have a quick second? I need to ask your opinion, and I need some advice on how you can help me. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. See, people love to help people, especially people in those positions. They love to help people. So what I'm going to do is this. He says, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Edwin, listen, um, recently I just came in contact with some very successful people. People like yourself were making 30, 40, $50,000 a month. I know he's not making that. So I'm putting him in that category. And uh, the information looked good. But you know what? I'm a little confused here, and I would like to have your opinion and your evaluation on whether this is the right opportunity for me. I can't explain the details, but I want to know if you'd be willing to take your time out for an hour of your time to evaluate it. And what I'll do is, you know what? I'll pay for lunch for us or something like that, or pay for dinner for us, and we go have dinner afterwards. But that would be doing me a big favor. Could you carve out an hour of your time to help me out in that way? Oh, absolutely. Hope. Great. Well, listen, what I'll do is this. The directions, this is the directions. The location is going to be here. It starts at 720. They recommend it, you know, to uh, get there just a little bit early to meet one of these um, very successful people who are going to be presenting. And I'll see you there at 7, 7 o'clock. Okay. Sounds good. I'll be there. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate that help. I got another decision. I got a decision whether or not he wants to help me. Now, all I do is get him at the business briefing. I'm going to treat him just like I treat anybody else. Put him on the front row and put my, my speaker on him. Get him. <laughs> get him, Tanja. Get him. You know, and so now I got my speaker on him. He's going to get involved in the business. 
How many of y'all know somebody who came to save somebody and end up getting in themselves? <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? And so that's what you want to do. Be in a hurry. Show value. Take it away. Pass the mic to Tanja real quick. Just, just to give you another example of just, I mean, just make it, just make it flow. Just make it flow. The indirect approach. Hey, Tanja, how you doing? This is Holton. I'm doing absolutely incredible. Tanja, listen, I don't have a lot of time, but you know what? I need to ask you a question. You got about a minute? Yes, I do. Tanja, listen, who do you know that will be looking to make about an extra three to $4,000 part-time this month without quitting what they're currently doing? I would like to. Okay, you know what? Good. I didn't think it would be you, but listen. <laughs> listen, I just, I, I, I just hit the jackpot. I'm right now, Tanja, working with some people, very successful, making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. Some are making that per week. Mm. There's wow. a conference call that I'm having at seven o'clock. I've got twelve lines available. I got about twenty-five people that want to get on. Do you think you can get maybe three of those people? I've got, I got room for you and maybe three of those other people that you know. Mm -hmm. We can get on it. It may not be for you, okay. and I may not have a position for you, but at least I'll give you a shot. Can how, we do that at 7 o'clock? How many people do I need to call? Only three. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. And so now I give it a conference call line. Guys, this is at any, this is, I'm just using a venue. This can be an executive lunch, and this can be a business briefing, a PBR, one on, whatever it is. You just inviting to get to an area. you collecting a decision. And now, because I use the indirect approach, I got her and three other people who's going to be on my conference call. Who do you know, Tanja, that are looking to make an extra three to $4,000 this month and not quit what they're currently doing part-time? Now, this is a key thing. The dollar figure that I use is going to be a dollar figure equivalent to what I think will turn you know, turn her to a yes. If Tanja's, for example, is used to making, uh, in this example, $1,000 a month, I'm not going to use three to $4,000 a month. That'll blow her out of the water. I'll use maybe three to $500 a month. Tanja's used to making twenty, thirty, dollars $40,000 a month. I'm not going to use two to $3,000. It's, it's insignificant to her. It's, she, it, it doesn't move her right now. I may use an extra ten to 15000 You prescribe the proper medicine for your prospects. You are the doctor. You know those people. You've got their checks marks right next to you. You know who they are. All I'm doing is collecting a decision. The more decisions that you collect in a short amount of time, the more money you'll make in this business. Guaranteed. Whether they're yes decisions or whether they're no decisions. Because I got a long list of people, I don't have a lot of time. And I'm not going to sit on the phone and chit chat with her about the idea. I've had people say, well, Holton, you know what? Um, you know, I'll get on the phone. Hey, listen, Tanja, you know, um, this is Holton, I got a quick question I need to ask you. If I found a way to make a fortune on the internet to make six to 12 months, would you want to know about it? Well, yeah, tell me a little bit about it. Tanja, I don't have a lot of time right now. Well, yeah, I'm interested. Well, great. Tanja, listen, seven o'clock, this particular hotel will be there. I can't guarantee anything. I got six tickets available, but I got 20 people who want them. I thought of you first. Well, Holton, tell me a little bit more. Right now, Tanja, I'm about to walk into my meeting. It's about to start, so I don't have time. We'll give you all the particulars there. Well, Holton, you know, if you don't tell me a, lot, a little bit more, then I don't want to come. Well, Tanja, I guess you're not coming. <laughs> Thanks for the 50. W what do you mean? Tanja, I collect $50 for every person who tells me yes or no, and you just made a decision. Thanks a lot for the $50. Well, how did you do that? Tanja, 7 o'clock at the Hilton Hotel, <laughs> Thursday night. You follow what I'm saying? Now, you may say, well, how in the world do you collect $50? Let me give you an example. My first meeting that I had in, in this company here, I invited 10 people. I made a list of 20. I mean, I, I actually made a list of se I had 71 people that I made on my list in my first, I think it was my first two days, two and a half days, 71 people I put on my list. Most of them were four checkers, some of them weren't. And my list continued to grow. I mean, it continued to grow. And what I did was this, I was having a conference call and I only wanted my four checkers, strong four checkers on this particular conference call. 
So I didn't call everybody, so I made a list of my top 20. These would be the people, what I call your million dollar 20. If you were starting a multi-million dollar business, who would be the people that you want on your board of advisors? It was these people that I put on that list, my million dollar 20. Out of those 20 people, I was able to get a hold of about 12 to 13. 10 of them said that they would get on a conference call, okay? Eight of them got on a conference call, seven of them got started. That first, for an hour, and my, my, my income as a uh, direct result of those people getting started, buying the products, uh, buying the packages to get in, I made $1,250. Seven got started, but 10 made a decision. What's $1,250 divided by 10? $125. I made $125 for each person telling me yes or no. So I divided my income that I made by the number of decisions that were given to me. And so many people, they internalize the no's. The no's, you get paid for those too. How many of you, you know, how many of you have sponsored an, ex you know, an executive plan in this business? You made $240 as a result of them buying the products. How many of you had to at least call five people to get that one person sponsored? Okay. And out of five people who made a decision, you made 240. Five goes into 240, what? 49? You made $49 for every phone call that you made. Thanks for the 50. If you look at it that way and you create your own environment of success, and you know that you make $50 every time you make a phone call and collect a decision, a proper decision, when you call a three or four checker, how many phone calls would you be willing to make? How many decisions, James, would you be willing to collect? Or would you sit there and let those people stay on your list and let that money sit into a bank account that you don't even have the PIN code to? See, the phone call is nothing but the ATM card. The phone is the ATM debit card. That's what the telephone is. The money is sitting out there. It's right now in a bank account for you, right now, waiting for you to do whatever it is that you want to do with it. But you have to have the ATM card. But the ATM card doesn't guarantee you money. Tens of thousands of dollars on this account here, and that's my, that's my business checking account. Go use the ATM machine, get, get it out. See, the phone is the ATM card. Picking up the telephone and making a phone call is the four-digit code that you need to get the money out. Because every one of you have a telephone, but everybody doesn't pick it up. You follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm not going to give you the code. You got to pick it up yourself. <laughs> wow. You mean to tell me that there's money just sitting out there in the bank account waiting for me and all I've got to do to get it is just collect a decision? Absolutely. If you want to make a little bit of money, collect a few decisions. But if you want to turn your network marketing business into a cash cow, then collect a lot of decisions.